everyone. Oh, God. You're going to really hear it. This is the first time we are hearing ourselves. It's uh, it's kind of a punishment for the late episode. We are forcing ourselves to think retrospectively and hear ourselves. I think this is should be man. It's mandatory in the curriculum for a man with a mic is self reflection in a way, and uh, we're giving it a shot here. Yeah, you put the headphones on to really almost like think before you speak. Yeah. Like you just. It's just like speaking, and then and then yes, you get to just listen back just to hear what you're what you're doing. It's the Joe Rogan experience. You hear the impact, the of the reality. Words. Yeah, women it, deserve rights. So now I hear what that I'm marinating that. Yes, oh yeah. I agree with that. It yeah. could be your uh, mantra or something. Um, and you just saw a little a new intro. Thank you to Robert. Animated something fun for us. So that's uh, supposed to be a depiction of us. Uh, I think we jump into. The episode, I think that's what it is. Welcome to Out of Character. Oh, there we Rated go. Rated five stars on Spotify. Spotify. If there's a rating system on Apple, also I'm maybe? sure, yeah, there must. Yeah, there. Are, well, I think everything has a rating system. So Yeah, and like. YouTube, and like, I guess. Yeah, we were late. We had a busy weekend. You had uh, your mother-in-law in town, and did you enjoy that? Was that fun? Um, yes and no. Well, why not? Okay, so, mother-in-law. Not yet. That's not true just yet. No. But I got a feeling of what it would be like. If she was. Yeah. If she was, right? So I got to spend some time with her. Okay, she's very similar to Mandy. Right. Interesting. Couple arguments between them. Okay, we get to see fi- family dynamic now. Really uh, coming through. Really shining. Any topics? Uh, hot hot topics of discussion? Um, A lot of stuff from the past, I guess. That okay. they're bringing up. Remember when you did this to me, mom? Well, remember when you did this, this, that. So I'm kind of listening in and, I'm, and I get to kind of learn about both of them. Um, and you know what? At the end of it, I came out and said, yep, I think I'll stick with these people. I'll stick with this family. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. That's all so you need. So yes and no. It was a little uncomfortable. But you know what? Overall, I would rate it maybe 6.5 out of 10. So, yeah. That's um, rating your, mo- your, your girlfriend 6.5. I've heard people give worse... Um, above average. That's all you can ask for. Well, we- it was my, it, no, it was my it was my girlfriend when she's around her mom. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. So just no, I no, I love my girlfriend. Um, it's just. You what know, did you rate her? Her mom. Her, your girlfriend, man. Oh, um. Well, I would rate her. I would rate Manny a nine point five because not <laughs> even perfect. You just lost a lot of uh, biases on that one. I think. Really. That's well, what do you well it all well what well, do you I've think heard, Mandy, I've what heard. do you think Mandy I would rate know. me and you know you know what she would rate me. She would oh, rate me a seven probably. She would have fun rating you. She'd do pages on pages. Yeah, I think she'd rate me a seven. So guys, don't cancel your biases just yet. The I the in from my what I know watching on the sidelines, I, I think they like to hear ten out of ten. That's like undying. You support. live in a fantasy world, women. You're not a ten out of ten. No one's a ten out of ten. Wow. It doesn't exist. Because what is 10, uh, like, let's let's be realistic. Let's truly be realistic. You know, you can say 10 out of 10 and try to be all motivational and whatever and yada, yada, yada. But unfortunately, no one's a 10 out of 10. Gwyneth Paltrow. God is a 10 out of 10. What do you rate God at a 10? Yeah, you have to say 10 out of 10. 10 or else you go to hell, of course. Because he's perfect. Yeah. Or they or she. God is a woman. Yeah. Some people even say that. Yeah, well, there you go. So, um, you know, what would you rate yourself, actually? So let's continue with this. <laughs> I would rate myself... Um, and don't say 10 out of 10 because I'm going to quit the podcast. I see you want room. You want room there for... You want to see me grow. That's why I you wanna would quit. I want to see you grow. I want to see you That's why you prosper. would quit. You would say, I, don't, I can't be around someone who thinks they've achieved it all. I want to be next to a grower. Um, I'd probably go seven. Okay, nice. And a lot of room for improvement, yeah. which is nice. Leaving yourself some room to really expand. Of course. I love that. And that's... um. No, I think seven ac- across uh, seven's fun. It's a fun place to be. I don't. I don't even want to. I don't want to get to a point where I honestly say nine. Can you imagine being cursed with? You know, Vinny has to. V- imagine being Vinny Hacker. Vin- What's his middle name? We got a, a probably like Garth or Andrew. Probably Andrew. Vinny Andrew Hacker. What do you rate yourself out of ten? If this guy says anything under nine, you just hate him. You're like. Okay. See? Well, we didn't even pick up on the thing. So, yeah. So, I don't so think... So, they didn't even hear it. it. 
but but fishes Fish me, me out. out. He doesn't really like when you talk about his TikTok idols. Um, yeah, no, I mean, because I hate you know when ugly people say they're not. It's like okay, so what am I? So what am I? Yeah, and then also also you know you're held to such a high standard. Oh my gosh, no, mm. you're walking around nine point five out of ten. Are you kidding me? Damn, that must be a really hard weight on your shoulder. Poor shoulders. Big backpack to carry. Vinny's got great shoulders. A, a lordy, he, he takes it just just like... And there's also women, too, that also are... And it's not just the guys we'd like to talk about. But I we, we saw uh, Tim Dillon this weekend as well, and that was so much fun. Fish. Hey. Can you control your cat? Fish. He's going to knock down the camera. Go. Down. Go. Maybe come here. Come here. Come here, little kitty. Bro, I can't. Just watch your watch your That's fine. He's he's a little um Well, does he know he's getting a sibling? He's getting a sibling. Um and so he's a little bit nervous. He's acting out. He heard me and Mandy talking in the in the bedroom, you know, about how we're trying to pop out another guy. We're trying to bring out another cat in, into the house. Um and we already decided on a name, guys, so I'm not going to sit here and ask for Names. Do you, or is it too intimate? I mean, to you give guys can you guys can offer some names for cat names, but I think we've already decided on one. And should I reveal it or should I wait? I would say it would be fun to give them a list and then say uh, okay. So and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna withhold opinions. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you he's can't hear, really but loud. he's meowing like crazy. He doesn't even like. It's a sensitive topic. I mean, you know, he's gonna be the middle child now, and that's just that is awful. But I'll give you the name. So we've. Had a couple. I think a big one, one of the biggest names, um, probably top three for us, is um, Gilbert. So that's one. Um, Curtis. Oh, you're a big Curtis Connor fan? So that's the thing. So that one tr- instantly went down. Why? Because Mandy said, oh, like Curtis Connor? Oh, damn. And then I was like, oh, wow, we got to change that. So, Isn't um, Gilbert a YouTuber? I don't know any YouTubers named Gilbert, but that's, that's the cat that uh, Caillou Jarvis. owns. That's Jarvis. Jarvis. Okay. And then there's another name. And so this one is, is, is the, I think, the winner in my heart. Well, you're revealing it. I, I said drop a list so they don't, so they're, they have fun guessing which one it's going to be. You know? Well, we don't know if it's going to be it. Mandy still has to, I have to convince her. The name that I want, <laughs> I want, is Nuke. So I'll let that marinate a little bit. Um, just picture a little kitten, but even when he grows up to be, to be big, it'll be funny. Inter- okay, so does that have like a a story to it, or are you just uh, t- just so you, is, um, what's the what's the cutie name? You know, the one on your are you getting the cuteness aggression? Where, where, where does that go from Nuke? Um, you got a plan for that? Sure, but also no, because look. I can sit here and I can list you some cute names I came up with, like like offspring names or whatever. But with fish, they just become unintelligible sounds. But, uh, gibberish. That's the cutie. The cute names are gibberish. So if you're talking about like the baby names that we give fish, mm. I, I can't. I can't. That is information that you, it, I, you couldn't even torture it out of me. I'm not going to sit here and tell you what my my cute names are for my cat. You know how sensitive that information is? That's something between me and my girlfriend only. So the fact that you even asked that is extremely disrespectful. I think you're not confident in the name Nuke, and neither am I. I think I am, and you're not. And I, and I, you know, you go for safe names. You, you I think you're, you're someone who thinks a name must be a human name. No, I, I'll say this, and you already know this, uh, but I think you're not, uh, I think... I think when you name things, it's really um, personal. It's very for you, uh, very acquired taste, and that's okay. Um, but it makes it trouble hard for me if I ever get asked to chime in. I try to refrain myself chiming in when it, I'm not asked mm-hmm. um, to not be honest. But again, it's your animal. Yeah. I mean, what do you think of fish? I disliked it very much, but uh, now, of course, it's fish. It's fish. You know, right, really and that's exactly what's going to happen with Nuke. It, look, Nuke is, names are just names, I'm not gonna guys. Say anything. You know, your name is Hamza, and we've all grown to love it. So <laughs> it is what it is, right? Like, Well, Nuke, I wish it had something, though, like a place where it came from. I wish. Okay, so what's your name suggestion? I like Gilbert. Gilbert's much better. 
Okay, so you see, that's what it is. You, for you, it's human names. I think those resonate with you more. Well, also, you said Caillou's cat. I like that backstory. That it's like from a show or something. Like Nuke is just like. Oh, Nuke. Oh, no. Nuke is a Marvel um supervillain. Okay, that's something. I didn't know. <laughs> Tell me. This is what I asked. Oh, no. And and I just added that in because you wanted something. So I, I want I, something. I can give you, so, I can give you something, that, but it's definitely not the reason why. I think it's cute. I think it's cute that it's a, a cat named Nuke as if it has such a big impact. You know, it's like, this is my cat, Nuke. Yeah, drop a Nuke on you. Yeah, and I pull him out. Oh, I got a Nuke. Okay. I got a little Nuke. Come on, Nuke. Look, I'll say this. If you guys think it's bad, and I'm not saying that they will, but there will be many people that, you know, uh, that's just how things go. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this. The runners up, runner ups. Oh, we had more. I had like a list. Were, of were, yeah, before these were, in fact, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, actually worse. So be happy with this one. I'll just say that you much. You guys will love him and you'll see a nuke reveal soon. And um, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be doing any of this if I even cared about your opinion. So. I know, I know, I know. Uh, but we went to Tim Dillon uh, on Saturday. It was really fun. There was, uh, it was your first show. It was like my second or third. First ever comedy show, guys. We could be closer. Or Tim Dillon did the honors of taking my stand-up comedy virginity. Who, like, what a better person. Is there a better person you could lose it to? I don't no. think so. Yeah, he takes very young men's, young men's virginity. It's not something, he's got a bag, a satchel where he just stores so I'm in there. He's like the grim, I said grim reaper, <laughs> Gr uh, grim reaper of that. Of that, he and takes them. You know? Are you in that sack with me? Oh, I've been. I, yeah, you're yeah, in Tim's I, sack. I've been okay, awesome. And, and and spun around, and it was very fun. You had two people. We'll insert them here next to you. A couple of guys. We uh, had the pleasure of being around. So I'm gonna take a picture at the time here, so I don't forget. Tell them about your experience. Wow, where do I begin? The, so the guys. it started off as a regular night. Me and Hamza walk into the venue. You know, I'm I'm feeling a little bit of a drinky poo, so I'm gonna go to the line up and um and get myself a thirteen dollar beer, of course, courtesy of the economy. Um, and I have a couple of guys standing, you know, not too far behind us, yelling, being a little disruptive. Um, people are just kind of waiting to get into the show for the show to start. And they're just kind of already yelling. You could tell they've had maybe a few drinks. Right. And I'm like, look, get a load of these guys. You said oh, that. They're, oh, they're going to be, they're going to be trouble. That's what I said. Yeah. They're going to be the hecklers. Cause I know stand up comedy hecklers. It's a common occurrence. Um, they're probably going to be in the clips. In the clips. On TikTok. Yeah. Clip it, yeah. Um, so we find our seats and lo and behold, they sit right next to us. Perfect. Yeah. And uh, they initiated a conversation very quick, but um, within what, maybe five minutes, you know, there's an opener and then an opener and then an actual show. In total, it's two hours. They fell asleep on Martin, started snoring very loudly, and then left, uh, I'm not joking, less than five minutes. And they were so pumped. It was my favorite part. Mm -hmm. Like, we love him. I'm so excited. They're like shimmying they kept nudging into me. their seat. Hey, uh, uh, whatever, just yapping. Um, I mean, they were nice. I don't want to say that they were they were they weren't rude, mm. but I I think it's like they were just uh, a little bit obnoxious. I think that's just like, and it's from a good place. They're they're probably drunk, enjoying their night. But um, yeah, I fell asleep on my shoulder. Um, I, I developed a strategy though. If someone ever falls asleep on your shoulder at a comedy show, what you can do is you can actually laugh really loud at a joke that is told so that it kind of wakes them up. That was the strategy that I developed. Um, and then who did you have on your right side? I had a, an elderly couple, that, the kinds of people who just walk into a show not knowing who it is, which I admire. And we and they asked us, who is this? And I was like, watch out. This guy's edgy, which he was. It was, it was some of the stuff in there was r a lot. And I was like, come on, this is for the youth. Get out of here. Freaking 40 minutes into the show, I catch this actual like 70-year-old just ghosting his vape and laughing at the craziest stuff. And that's when I realized the rapture is coming. Like there's no more, there's no boundaries. You don't level up to an elderly, you know, you don't, there's no, it's all blending. I saw a video of little Wayne's kids dancing to Ken Carson. You saw that one? I saw that one. Yeah, I did. And what's going on? They're like nine and they're like, I need my, my drugs, drugs. And I was like, oh. uh, what was it? 
Where my blunt at? Uh, I'm gonna smoke this reef. 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 reef what the hell reef. is that song? Bro? Where the fuck my yeah? yeah where, where the where the fuck my blunt? Come on, where's your di- where's your nappy, bro? So that's when I get stressed. Things like that stress me out. I just realized, yeah, I have Invisalign in for those of you audio people. So getting a little more textured sound here today. ASMR a little bit sprinkled in. And I, we get to um, hear it as well. I like you when you have your Invisalign on. Thank you. They as do. As opposed to off. I saw a picture. The picture I took with Tim Dillon, my teeth look like veneers. Uh, did you notice <laughs> that? I actually was shocked. They look like horse teeth because I was smiling very big, which I do not do often. And then I had the Invisalign. And then I was like, is this Sophie Vergara from, what's her name? (laughs) Sophia Vergara? Vergara? Vergara from, I believe, Shameless. No, it's me. Smiling, happy. Um, Thanks, man. And I have only uh, a half a year left. Yeah. So that'll be like three years. You saw the Smile Direct Club stuff? Oh, yeah. How (laughs) they're just like filing for bankruptcy. But yeah, but anyone who's on their stuff. They were just like, figure it out. That's all the LA influencers, man, going through some small direct club. And then, you know, they're just like losing all their customers because everyone's getting veneers instead. No one needs the small direct club. Yeah. Veneer. The veneer industry is probably a billion There's some dollar people industry. Who right now. Used, they could have used a direct, a, a direct trip. A lot of access. They shouldn't have gone a direct trip to Colombia. They should have directly brushed their teeth and, and got braces instead. So, so I'm sorry, I'm confused. What did Smile Direct Club like? What is their thing again? They just filed bankruptcy, but their 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 service was a sort of Invisalign thing. But they would just send to your mail the imprinting. Oh, okay. Kit. You send it back to them, and they send you the Invisalign, so you don't go to the doctor at all. Oh, cool. But they had a plan. One of their little aligning plans was that you only wear it when you go to sleep, which very attracted me. I I almost fell into it. So you almost joined the Smile Direct Club. It's it's actually very close to the Mile High Club. It's in the same. It's in the same genre. Really? Yeah. Well, I bet there's some overlap. Even the people who have joined the Mile High Club while wearing their Smile Direct Club, what's that club called? Smile High Club. Um, it's called the. Yeah, and it was definitely on a Southwest flight because the Smile Direct, unfortunately, is for the lower income, I mm-hmm. believe. So. I, no, I was crazy. in the no Definitely. direct club. I was in. The, uh, well, I, I had braces. I actually had braces. No, I was in. The, I was. In, I, no, we splurged. We splurged. My family splurged on that. Wow. My braces. You're gonna show off your privilege. I had braces. <laughs> well, um, but you. But why don't you wear a retainer? Damn. I just got PTSD, bro. That's that's crazy. Like you should be uh, ashamed. I should think. I? Yeah, I don't know how. The kids do this. Oh, I see. Uh, obviously, the re- there's relatable you videos. You really shame me, bro. Well, I see relatable videos of people saying, I hate, you know, I hate my, when I forget the retainer for a week. You know I would be very you stressed out. retainers and elastics and stuff. Why am I finding elastics all over my house? Why am I finding that here? Are you? Yes. It's my, it's how I let people know I've been there. I just go. We had 50,000 subscribers on Slushy Noobs. That's a very big milestone. We're thinking of doing a Draw My Life, maybe. To draw g- My Life and uncover the mystery of where I spawned. Where, yeah, and we'll, and we'll give the full How context. How I came to be. You could do Invisalign and or Brace's story in there. Oh, I definitely. Oh, I have so many. I'm, I feel like. Um, but Invisalign just the main ones. You can't. Yeah. Not a documentary. No, I mean we should we should we should go into depth and and really show people who we are, how we as humans grew up. Yeah. Cuz everyone has a unique story to them and I think mine's one of the most unique. Yeah. I think so. I think I'm a very unique person that had a very different way of growing up. Well, one of us is a home birth. And one is Guess it? which one? It's me. Don't take that from me. <laughs> <laughs> and That's one of us I is born in Yemen. Who was that? Guess. <laughs> uh yeah, we're, we're going to do it. Should we? Yeah. Confirmed. And we also have a P.O. box. We'll put that in the description if you Ooh. guys want to send anything. Yeah, because um, it applies to out of character, too. I mean, if you guys want to send us, maybe we open something on, on the podcast if it's fitting. No, 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 no. We'll never do that. Never open it. It's anything. an audio. It's audio first is what this is. Oh, we can describe it in great detail for you audio listeners out there. That's like, uh, it's like, uh, what is it called? We when just lie to them. Or they're blind. We just lie to them. 
Because they're not going to watch it, so they don't know what Oh, my God, an oh my Xbox. God. Are you kidding me? We just got a freaking... Oh, my God. A million dollars. Seriously, why would you send this? And it's just a chamoy pickle kit. <laughs> like, our ninth chamoy pickle kit. Uh, so, there's that. But... And this account's about to hit 30,000, so it's very... Thank you guys so much for the support. It's been fun. We hit 1,300 five-star reviews on Spotify, so thanks for that. Um, anyway, we have... Uh, I want to tease the video we're going to record today. Is it preemptive? Is it... That's happening today? The one recording. The game? Yeah. Okay. Sure, you can tease it. Should it? No. What's the point? This is a podcast. Well, we're, it's going to be with people. It's going to be with people, two other people. One so. person has a two-letter name. Can you guess who it is? And one has a 12-letter name. Okay. One has a 15-letter name. Okay. It's Zach Galifianakis, guys. Uh, So there's that. When I was driving here, dude, it was like the most, uh, the very strange vibe. I have turned on Tame Impala for, there's some times where it's just like, I will listen to the less I feel the better with no shame, chest The less down. I know the better. Please get it right. For God's sake, What'd you Tame say? Impala, less I feel the better. All right. You're what on you, me for the what names. Are you, what are you using? Freaking some numbing agent? <laughs> what did I say? The less I feel the better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, are we known for saying things correctly? Um, we, you, I always print. I always we, say stuff correctly you. because I make it. I make it a, a goal. I know, I know. You really care about those things, so I'm sorry. But we, but I was listening to it one more time. The less I know, the better. And um, and then I just saw like a m old man, very cute man with like a shaved, not shaved, but like fixed beard. So that's no accident. Not homeless is what I'm trying to stress dappered just sitting on the floor sobbing and he was just using his finger and like almost like how someone would play in the sand he just ha was sitting on the floor and just writing on the ground like that Aww. old man but not so old that it's like dementia it was like 60 dapper working man and i'm here listening to less i know the better <laughs> Something I would never listen to, and I'm seeing this, and then, and then I don't know. And then this is what happens next. I swear to God, I'm like trying to look. I roll up to a stoplight. Guy in front of me is driving like a jerk, and we roll up next to each other. So, and I always look at the person if they're a jerk. That's that's what I do. So I look, I categorize them, I see him, and then I look back straight, and I'm taking in the moment. I look again. I swear to God on everything. He's behind me now. <laughs> the less I see, the know, the more I the more you don't know what's gonna happen next. And then I just turned off the music and drove in silence. I'm never listening to freaking Impala Same again. Impala again. You're, they say his music is psychedelic, and you had a psychedelic <laughs> experience right there. It was. You saw a freaking. What do they call it? What did the? What do Asians call the? Um, the uh, ghosts. Oh man, a gin. A gin. No, that's also that's Arabic. Is it Arabic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a gin. Why are you on those better than me, bro? First Dunya Dean on the gin, bro. <laughs> you saw a gin, man. I might be Is it cursed, Japanese. Man. Is it Japanese? I, I feel like it, it, it's everywhere. They're all the same thing. Aren't they just like genies or something? It's Evil all, genies? Yeah, it all comes from freaking Jesus. So you got cursed, man. So I wonder what's going to happen. Is this podcast going to stop recording? <laughs> Well, Is it that did the yesterday. Curse? It did yesterday, bro. Third time's a charm, man. We feel like we've talked about... Oh, no. We didn't visit the same topics, really, this time. We kind of switched it up. Yeah. And you guys will never see the podcast yesterday. That was a crazy one. It was. Um, the, And it was just weird vibes. And I think I, I started the vibes in the morning. I went to run. I went to work out. Whole time, I listened on loop to... um. What's the song with Gene Aiko, the girl who dated Big Sean? Groceries? And no, 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 and Childish Gambino. Oh, uh, oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I actually wrote it down. I thought you were listening to Groceries, bro. Is that her? Eat that booty like groceries. I thought you were listening. That to was her. <laughs> yeah. No, it's Bed Piece. So how does that song go? Let me find it. I have to look up the lyrics. Bed Piece. Lyrics. Be careful here. <laughs> oh. Wake up, wake up, gotta get this paper, oh. get this cake up, cause what I'm trying to say is, right? Okay. It's a beautiful song. She's amazing. So I'm listening to it on loop, but every time 
this freak childish Gambino chimes in, just kills the vibe. Oh, I hate him. Whoa, I hate him. I Whoa. hate you. I hate you. There's this angel, and then this guy from Community. Who are you, bruh? That's like listening to Beyonce and Creed Bratton comes on, or freaking Jim Halpert, bruh. I don't need that. I hate you, childish Gambino. He's like, you're not on that level, man. I, you did. Hang on, I'm hearing myself swallow now. What did he do? Three thousand and five. What's his big ones? Use the headphones. Use the headphones. Reflect on what you're saying right now. <laughs> careful, careful, careful. No, I'll die on this, and I'll throw a couple more people in there. Amine. Bow. Oh my. One more. One more. Whoa, Let's get whoa, one whoa. more. Who's the next victim? Who's the next victim? I'm Frank not Ocean. saying anything. Boom. No, Already no. Whoa. Victim. Don't. Do <laughs> Bro, this is nothing. You're an, you're a secret Frank Ocean hater. Um, I I don't like him. His music is amazing, astounding. But I don't. I think it sucks. I I of course after Coachella. I mean. We have to have respect for ourselves, you know. As fans, you oh, have to draw wow. lines. And we everyone forgot about that because I, well, I did. I don't know about everyone. Yeah, I did. like Cardi canceled Europe. I draw forgot your about lines. that though after this latest one. Come on, I forgot about that. You have to draw your lines, folks. Kanye did what? Um, that's mine. Did I forget? What was his latest one? Everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock that body. Who started the sampling BS? J Dilla. What was it? I know y'all know. What song was that? It's an artist. Jay Dilla, producer. I know, but what song did he start it with? Uh a bunch of his disc if his whole discography is sampling. He's a producer. But is it like were they were they record? Um like he's big probably ones? produced, I feel maybe for like MF Doom or something. I don't know. I don't know who Jay Dilla is. And it just went black for a second and we put those on purpose so that you guys can see the reflection of your face momentarily and think about, you know. What we're saying. And it would be kind of insane to watch a podcast sat and watching it like that. But some of you are are still have attention spans and I respect that. Is anyone watching this while standing? Is anyone watching this in 2023? So, take a picture and upload it. Is anyone... <laughs> 2023. <laughs> Say 2024, though. Whoa! Whoa. Is we're anyone watching this in 2024 or listening to this in 2025? We're speaking to the future. We can do this now. Okay, let's not get all... No, someone it. started it. I, I... Okay, I'm not saying this to give them props, but it must be Young Gravy. Yeah, you're right. He Young was, Gravy started sampling. I think he's the first one. <laughs> no, I'm saying the ones, like, just take an unlimited budget, buy the biggest sample, like, actually buy the rights to a big-ass hit, and then just be like, okay, I'll just rap over it, and it'll hit because... The song already hit one. It's like Lion King 2 out here. Like, come on. Mm -hmm. We can actually set up an easy viral clip here. if we, Because I, I know TikTok loves Young Gravy. So you can actually... Do they? Yeah, we can just like spend like a second to just like give okay. him his flowers. Let's start it. So you met Gr Young... You went to the green room at Young Gravy's tour. Yeah, because he like... He follows me on TikTok. And so I, I reached up at the crowd and I said, Yo, what's up? And he said, Yo, come to the green room after. And... It was awesome. You said there was a blue powdery substance all over the coffee table. Yeah, I, that, he said it like it's like an adre adrenaline or something that helps him perform. But I asked him, I said, like, dude, like, you are like the goat of TikTok, like music. Like, how did you, how do you do He it? is. Because I'm like, you, I noticed you use a lot of like samples and stuff like that. And he said, like, I'm, the, or he said he's, he's the first person who did, who made did samples. samples. Yeah. And how, and he's very tall. He's really tall, like six foot eight or something crazy. Wow. Yeah. And he did which one? He did. He did um, uh, Baby Gravy or something. Or what's it called? <laughs> I don't even know, man. I don't know enough of his music. My to Baby do Gravy, bro. <laughs> you know what? That's a, that's a slang for something. Um, My Baby Gravy? Come on, you got baby this. Baby Gravy? What makes babies? Oh, yep. I just clued it. Damn. He gave you his Baby Gravy. We could have snuck that. We could have made the clip. Pop well, now the clip's done. He gave me a baby gravy in the green room. <laughs> I fell victim to the baby, the gravy train in the green room. Oh, is that what it is when he runs train with his friends or something? Do they call it? He's you're definitely part of the gravy train. If he's in under under enough of the influence of enough of that, he says, "Here comes the gravy train." Yeah. Okay. Nice. And he goes, choo choo. And then they and then they genuinely have like a nice Thanksgiving dinner after and pour the gravy on it. Oh, that would be nice. There was a, uh, yeah, no, I mean, he did invent sampling and uh, 
Well, that's just a track. Like the, you know, Nicki Minaj, she kind of bit Young Gravy with the new one. And yeah. I didn't want to say it. I yeah, I didn't want to say it either. I mean, honestly, like people are biting a lot of what Young Gravy does. Like they're noticing that that's what trends. Nicki bit with her first song. Yes, and it love. She took the sample. She took that one, and then there was another one with Lil Uzi Vert. Also, another everybody or something. <laughs> it's like, um, how many fandoms can we piss off in one episode? <laughs> Speed run. Let's just bring up Emma and Cody while we're here. Uh, well, she got number four, which is good for enough, her. enough, enough. Yeah, yeah, let's stop. Let's stop. Um. Let me check my notes because I always write things I really want to bring up with you guys, important things like Cosmics, the new McDonald's chain. Which I'm extremely excited for because, hey, another place to eat. That's technically not McDonald's, right? Because it didn't, isn't McDonald's boycotted? So we can go to Cosmics, right? Or uh, it's a different name. Is that how it works? Look, it's in Illinois regardless. There's one in Illinois. Okay. You're saying like you're going to hit it. They probably don't have any money to donate to Israel. To if Israel? They to. They're, um, I think so. That's the, it, it's just the, f- it's just the way they're standing on the business is, is the crazy part to me. Like Starbucks, you, yeah. we saw the stock graph yesterday. Yep. And like the past yep. month is just plummeting. Plummeting, plummeting. And, and people like, are concerned. Damn. People are, there's some sales I'm seeing in the U.S., Half off on Thursdays, their drinks. Oh, some of you are Damn. folding. I know. Some I know of some of you guys folded. I know the some. The freaking of you guys what is it? The the gingerbread one latte. You know, what? I one? really couldn't even tell you what, what they what their name because you haven't even been in there. No, I. You're loyal. I don't. Well, I think I saw an advertisement. There was a. There's always a sugar cookie. There was some kind of sugar cookie. I oh like wow! Remember. Really? Yeah. I I'm not for the cookies. I didn't know. Uh, they had festive cookies and. Wow, and now you're just convincing the listeners, so thanks for that. But you know what this shows? This just shows that there's room for another restaurant to kind of emulate it. Like, why? Are, why? Cosmics. Because I was talking to Mandy, and I said, what are some places like Starbucks? And we couldn't come up with anything. Because I don't like, I'm, I'm going to, this might be a hot take, but even just, the, there's so many coffee shops nowadays, and they're all the same. Like, I hate when someone says, oh, this coffee shop is really good. I'm sorry, but what's the actual difference between this one and uh, and the hundred others in the same neighborhood? The only people struggling with the Starbucks stuff are the ones who like the sweet treats because that that can't be emulated so easily. No, you can't. The syrups that they use, God, it's I all wonder what they put in there. Boom, boom, boom. Nine, you know, shots. Because if you go local, they don't. They out, they're looking out for your health. They don't want you to. You want good beans? You go local. That's fine. Mm-hmm. We also have another monopoly, which is Tim's. So it's like the illusion of choice has been gone. That's why people or shocked in many of these boycotts because it's like, oh, today's supposed to be a boy is a boycott. Didn't leave my house. <laughs> oh, so you did it. <laughs> I did it. I did. But it. you do it. You boycott all the time. <laughs> I boy. I <laughs> <laughs> I'm a serial boycotter, man. I don't <laughs> leave my house. Don't don't leave. Don't spend money. Done. <laughs> Done. Bro. Um. What else? What's next? Done. <laughs> A month, I'm on day four. What are y'all at? <laughs> like, dude, that was a one day thing, man. Don't worry. You're like, I can go five. I can go five. I'm like trying to make it cool being a loser, like not going outside, doing anything. I'm like, Saving come on, guys. Money. Really? Seriously? You guys are st- not boycotting anymore? You know, that's like whenever COVID ended and people are like, really? You still go? <laughs> You're started to go? <laughs> yeah. You're going yeah. really? And we're like, look. <laughs> it's great you're doing this and I'm not going to say anything to no, you. No, because you can't. You can't. As long as you don't say anything to me. Yeah. No, that, you really can't. You can't dog on them because it's like, okay, you know what? You're right. You're right. Where you are ma- stopping Dude, the spread. I saw a mask today. In in my like in my days of Tame Impala, I, I see a woman with a mask as well for the first time in ages. You know, yeah. it's still trending. And what are you going to say? Especially if they're older. Fine. I, I, I don't know. You could literally be like... On the edge of death with like sickle cell and like mm-hmm. four other things. Like, I don't know. And how does sickle cell... Now, it's funny because you're saying, you're kind of alluding that it's COVID, but guess what? I just checked the news. Bird flu. What the hell? Coming back. Bro, Swine flu. Is that even... Why are you just putting animals in front of flu? Dog flu. Nuke flu. Nuke flu, bro. <laughs> that yeah. was one of the names, though, for my cat, Bird. Yeah, that was one of them. <laughs> It was. You're proving me right, and I was, I was trying to save you some. I was trying to save you some grace here. Leave him guessing. Grace. 
That's good. That's a good one. Is it going to be a boy or a girl? I'm going to pick the most religious name possible. That's faith. fun. As well. Yeah, faith. Dude. Serendipity. Oh, right? I'm taking that. <laughs> Serendipity. I don't even know. I'm going to name my next cat Faith. This is Faith. And it's just a demon. Like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking Sultan or whatever. What's Sultan. The, what, is, what is the name? What is Satan? Shaitan. Shaitan. Not Sultan, bro. I think there's people named this Sultan. Shaitan. This is Shaitan. <laughs> no, you went the other way. Um... Yeah, I might take faith. Look out for faith 2024, man. Uh, but, you know, look, th there's probably a website where you put in the square footage of your home and it tells you how many animals you can own. Yeah. And Do you think I pass? I don't think you. I think you're pushing it. Like if okay. You, how if about you this? get another. Three animals. Okay. You guys calculate it. Three animals. Okay. Well, no, give them the specs. Yeah, I'm going to give them the specs. Chihuahua. Um, okay. So Chihuahua, small Chihuahua. Two four, Cornish. Four or five pounds, maybe. Then two Cornish Rexes. Um, he's going to be smaller than his new brother that's coming in. Oh, brother's uh, well, bigger? He's going to be smaller when they're this, like, Same age. when they're grown. Um, so I would say I would say three, four pounds. Do you think he's heavier than Rudy? I don't know, bro. Anyways, size of apartment, let's say 700. You tell me, I don't know. I think it's, I think, well, counting balcony probably. Let's say 600. Damn. Yeah. I live in this tiny apartment. Um, yeah. So I'm smaller. I feel like that's fine. They're not big animals. And a fish. And um, a fish. So that might take up a little bit of room. I think it's pushing it just uh, logistically with litter boxes and things. But mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to splurge on that litter box. Yeah, you're I getting the to. rotating one. I got to get one. the rotating one. I have to. I have to. I must. Did you buy it today? You know there's a boycott. No, I didn't buy it today. Good. What did I buy today? Oh, my God. You know what I did? I bought the merch for someone who won the giveaway in our Discord. Oh, yeah. The merch, the one I'm wearing in all the Slushy Noobs merch. Actually, Six that's days the one left. they picked. That's the one they picked. Oh, really? Yeah. Six Good days choice. left. What was your name out there? Uh, Bridget. I think that was your name. Six days left, and then it's gone indefinitely. Then they'll be actually out of character merch mid-Jan. So, buy it or not, but uh, it, will be, it will be on its way out. So, thank you guys for the support on that as well. So many people... We're seeing you guys wearing it and stuff. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome, and it's gonna be nice to to take a a bunch of money and just send it overseas. Yes, we That's are. It's gonna be a good feeling. What's well, actually becoming a, a bit more of a pro a, a problem, not problem, but challenge. Because I yeah, I saw a TikTok that was like, if you are donating to Palestine, they are not getting in. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually thinking of like low key going through my parents and seeing if they could find because they're friends with a lot of palestinians yeah. if they could find like just a family that's like there right now oh yeah yeah, yeah. we got some mr straight. beast action going in <laughs> changing their lives yeah it might be a better okay because that's my like my parents would never let me donate like to yemen they'd be like no nah, well yeah give it to us and we'll give it yeah. to the people yeah that's why we've been holding off because it's like yeah you're right it's like you need to ensure that it gets there because it's like so hard to tell they don't give you a little tracking of like this was made to f to fix this guy's arm. Yeah. Like, that would be nice. Oh, that would be so cool. Like, what are the stats? What did we do? Yeah. Uh, maybe that would, inc that would like incentivize a lot more people to donate, I would, s I would say. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for many of you uh, here, new or not, we have a segment at the end where we solve your problems. Um, send your dilemmas, your questions, your situation... Uh, whatever you got to out of character pod on Instagram, just DM it and give it a follow while you're at it. Cause then you get updates such as the one I sent last night saying the episode would be late. So just like that, here we are. Hey Hamza. I recently went on a date with a 22 year old man. Congratulations. Even though I am a tw 18 year old lesbian. No. What? Not congratulations. And things got slightly freaky. He texted me a week after the date and said he may have chlamydia. <laughs> I think it's going to lead up to being Timothy Chalamet. Let's just say things did not continue after that. A few weeks later, I went on a date with a girl and kissed her and found out I had COVID the next day. What's up with the transfer of diseases on your first dates? I was wondering what you think the best way is to tell someone you gave them a disease <laughs> on the first date. Also, can I get a shout out? My name is Rin. Thanks, King. Also, for the record, I got lucky and didn't get chlamydia. But 
COVID. Got co- who's getting COVID now? Lesbians, apparently. Um, That's what you get for dating a man when you're a lesbian. Stick to chlamydia. your freaking roots. What are you doing? Well, we're seeing... Why, are you, bra- why are you a lesbian branching out to... T- like, what? Stick with a woman. At least you get COVID and not chlamydia. Warren chimes in. Maybe it was a female. Yeah, it could have been Timothy Chalamet. Because that's kind of the type of man a lesbian would go for. You know, feminine touch, aerodynamic, smooth skin. You don't like the arm movement? Still gives you chlamydia, which is such a feminine disease for some reason. Why does it sound so? It sounds like a name. That's why. A beautiful name. Chlamydia? It's like Lydia. This is my cat, Chlamydia. That's a good one, too. Lydia, short for chlamydia. Also, if I remember correctly, chlamydia, I think, affects women a lot harder. That's what I heard. Because they've got the snatch. I think it's something like pregnancy or with. something like you can't. Um, your adv- what did you want advice on? What does she need? Uh, uh, wh- just don't. How to tell someone? Well, how you tell them is you just let them know. But you said how to let someone know after you gave them. Let me make sure I got this right. So are you spreading this as well? Are you part yeah, of this problem? Yeah, what's going on here? How do you let people know you gave them a disease? I don't know. Maybe send them I was wondering message. what you think the best way to tell someone you gave them a disease on the first date. Maybe she's like thinking in their shoes. I mean, it is. I could see how it, it's initially an embarrassing thing to do. Yeah. The reason why there's a lot, I think, in the first dates is because that's where the most risk is. It's like, when else are you going to get it? The third date? Like, Are people really walking around just doing like... But they're just not getting tested. That's where the problem lies. Um, I think, uh, yeah, you got to pick better people. And don't be afraid to, you know, say cough up them papers. Mm-hmm. Something. You know, Andy they hit me with that. They send them on the emails now. You don't even need, you don't need to carry a physical paper. It's probably an email. That's like. Yeah. Mandy wanted proof of vaccination, proof of. No. Yep. She wanted everything. Vaccination? Yeah. What do you mean? You want to mingle with someone who's anti-vax? Okay, is that like before dating or before co- coital? Everything. Coital, it's crazy. Directly before or a day before? Or well, well, before interacting with me. Okay, that's it. It was peak COVID. Peak COVID and then also, you know what I mean? Like well, they, they had, had a the toggle. STD check. You got to get that all checked, guys. That's This is something. Let's let's break this freaking stigma around it, all right? There's nothing wrong with asking someone if they're clean. I don't even think there is a stigma. Like, if you actually are not no, asking, you're the No, there is. Young people are weirdo. embarrassed. Young people are embarrassed to ask someone if they're tested. I don't know why. Young people shouldn't be having sex. Let's stop that. Stop children having sex. You can stop that. That might get us flagged right there. Putting those words together. Underage? Better? Underage. Stop underage. No, because underage is fine. I'm talking about children. Move on. Let's it's move getting on. younger and younger. Here we go. Next person. Um, thanks for for uh for that. Rin. For sharing that. Next up we have Anonymous. Whoa, scary. <laughs> I don't know okay. what they're gonna say here. Well, this is about school. We have a rule now that we're not taking just general advice with school, majors, finances, because... Do we look like guidance counselors? Come on. This is this is an offer in your school that you can... Yes. All right. We got an audio message here from Parker. Hey, guys. So, uh, to paint a picture, I'm 18, called freshman um, in Colorado, but I'm from Hawaii. And basically, everybody thinks I'm gay. Like, everybody thinks I'm gay. All my friends are like, oh, haha, ha. like, when I first met you, I thought you were gay. Girls will approach me, and I'll be like, oh, sorry, like, I'm straight. Um, But I literally, it's, like, funny, but it's also kind of, a, like, an issue. Because I'm like, what is even going on? I literally have never, like, no man has, like, approached me ever. Um, You know, like, it's just, like, so, like, what? I sent pictures for reference, I guess. But, um... Yeah, basically, what do I do? Like, I don't know what it is about me. And, of course, there's nothing wrong with, like, looking gay. But, personally, I don't... Like, I'm straight. So... so. Okay, I don't believe you. Um, well, there'll be pictures playing right now. Right now. We're yeah, gonna put I just... I, I'm sorry. Like, you're... I'm sorry. You're gay-coded. You are now part of the LGBTQ community. And you have to integrate yourself. Assimilate. I'm sorry. You I were chosen. Know. You were chosen. Look at her. 
Is this screaming gay? You know what? I couldn't tell you. Is this someone with COVID or chlamydia? But if but if the community around you is is inching you and saying, "Look, She's you saying are it's very, men. There ain't no lesbian community with the men. Men are not approaching her. Girls are approaching her. But she said simultaneously, they want men her. Are they not. want her. Simultaneously, men are not. Just give in. Just give in. I've been in your shoes, believe it or not. One time, I met someone at a, in a crowded area. Let's say it was a function of sorts, and they see me and they go, "Oh my God, it's Hamza." And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she goes, oh my God, you're gay. And immediately, I straighten my back. I throw away my little cocktail. And it felt terrible. So I sympathize. They actually said that in a happy way. Mm. Can you imagine someone like knowing of you and then they see you and they're like, oh my God, I could tell by just... Your presence, that you suck dick. I need to work on my presence. If that's, you know, so maybe it's a presence thing. Posture, I'm seeing your posture. Um, you could, uh, maybe the fits, this one with the necklace. Art teacher. Look, I think she just got claimed by by the LGBTQ and, and, and that's it. They claim you, you're part of them. Sorry, that's just the way life goes. Try again in another life. Good try luck to be to you. straight. Yeah, try to be straight in another life. I mean, you can't do much about it. Good luck to you. And um, okay, and here's one of the last ones from Emily. Hey, Martin and Hamza, I'm 21 years old and never been in a relationship. Do you guys think this is abnormal? Lie if the answer is yes. It used to really bother me, but not anymore. The problem is I can't seem to think of anyone romantically now. What should I do? I'm pretty reserved and usually like to be alone. And the exception... A friend, with the exception of friends and family, should I put myself out there more, or stop trying to force myself into wanting a relationship? I'm just afraid I'm getting an, to an age where I'm going to be old for for never too old for never having a relationship. What do you think? I say give up everything and just maybe live in the countryside somewhere, hermit. Mm. It's over for you. Twenty one years old, you came. You're so yeah, you're over. Wow. Well, look, he's Martin's the one in the relationship, so I think his opinion weighs more. I'm gonna say um, you basically lived your entire life at 21. I am, ba <laughs> I'm basically uh, your in your shoes. So we're in this together. Together. <laughs> together. <laughs> um, I say you're fine, bro. Chill out. Like, um, yeah. I mean, this is what you're in the market for. This, you know, I don't know if she's necessarily in the market for that. Well, I am a man. I am a 21 year old man. You know what I mean? So you could wait it out, but just say, I'm just going to tell you this. The hairlines aren't going to get better, you know? So that should be the deciding factor. Do you want, yeah. Do you want a relationship and knowing that hairlines are receding? If you can wait. Yeah. yeah. Just to know that you can't, you might have a little Vegeta hairline, you know, you got to put up with what you can get. Other than that, on a personal cause, you're fine. Women women have hit a second wind at 24 where they flourish and bloom. And men just start a podcast. <laughs> so you're fine. And Ben Garcia chimes in. Here we go. Oi, I'm Zan Martin. Um, name's Ben. I go to uni in Manchester. Um, straight to the point, I, um, the other night I saw... My best mate's girl snogging another guy at the pub and uh, she was quite drunk and she came up to me and was pleading for me to not tell my mate about the whole thing. Um, her father's quite wealthy and uh, so she was offering me a sum of money Oh, it's fake. Um, yeah, it's fake. to not tell him. So, I don't know, I just wanted to... No, 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 no. He just whoa, switched. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen again, listen. He just lost it. I don't give a flying <laughs> flip if his accent is Listen, listen, you can't. And uh, so she was offering me a sum of money um, to not tell him. So, I don't know. I just wanted your guys' advice. Like, I haven't told him yet. It was only a couple nights ago. Oh, it's... Um, oh so, should I tell him what she did? Or if not, like, how much money should I try Boy. to get from her? Uh, all right. First time... 
caller, long time listener. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Well, Boy. he just traveled to like eight different countries. He Damn. snogged us, bro. He literally snogged us. I was, <laughs> I was very invested, so I got really mad. No, there's him. probably none of that's real. Really? No, I don't believe it. you. Don't trust someone who says snog and then bounces accents. He snogged us. Okay. Well, the real question is, how much money would you have to be offered to not tell your best friend that they it was only a makeout, only a kiss? Yeah. Depends on the friend, of course, but let's say it was you. Okay, so, okay, yes. How much money would you mm. want to not to not tell you. me that Mandy cheated on me by making out with someone at the club? $800. Okay, now my question is, what would you buy with that $800? Yes, five. Okay, so we can play with each other. Yeah, yeah exactly. All right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking long term here. Uh, thank you for chiming in. Ben, you actually did make us laugh here, but that was an advice uh that's okay we're gonna get one more so many of you guys send in send in your dilemmas and we we can't do all of them final piece of advice here Ch elena chimes in here we go hi hams and mar and i've been best friends with this guy for many years and one year ago he started dating a new friend i made they're super they dated for a year and were super in love and now they have just broken up for our last year in university next year I was supposed to be living with his girlfriend, who has become my close friend, too. I still hang out with both of them separately. Would it be bad friend code for me to live with her still? Would that be fair on my guy best friend? Let me know your thoughts. What the hell is this? Guy best, girl best friend? You have hit that age. Fourth year of uni. There's no, you don't have, how do people have friends? How do people have a guy best friend and a girl best friend? I don't think this is right. Pick one side. Pick one side to be friends with. Yeah, or like how do you... Ha like imagine Mandy just had a guy best friend. Oh my God. Like how is this going on, y'all? If Mandy had a guy right. best friend... If you had a girl... If you had a girl friend who you hung out with just like... <laughs> I mean, I have a... F but you I don't... I have friends, but I don't... Like you're not like... They're not my best friend. Dude, you're not even close to like, would you go to like the concert with the girl and just her? No, it would be with Mandy. So these people already met. I don't know what, I hate this. I'm sorry, but it's not even a principality thing. I'm not saying there's some sort of structure here. And also none of this should affect you. Just go live with the person if, it's, if it benefits you. I don't care. But like, living with the guy and the guy broke up with the girl. Living with the girl, the guy, but it's it. it but she's does. saying beforehand she was the girl best friend. She was this guy who dated this girl. She was his best friend. Guys, welcome to the middle school podcast <laughs> where we where we dwell. But on that's what it feels like. Literally, it feels like middle school. So I think you need to graduate out of this. I don't like this at all. This is. We need some real. Come on. Where's the where's like the divorce advice? Yeah, I've been waiting for someone. Let's to grow up a little, guys. Who's we'll watching work you this? through Let a check divorce. The demographics after this episode. My we're gonna gosh. check and we're gonna tweak it on some Matt Rife stuff. We're gonna remove. We're gonna age restrict this video. All of you, thank you for listening, guys. And uh, oh man, I had a note. Oh yeah, we are going to be doing a live podcast in your at York University early February. So if you are in the GTA or go to York, look forward to that. That is true. And and let them know how interested you are and how excited. Spread you the are. word. Maybe, you know, maybe bring some friends that don't know about us. Try to introduce them. Yeah. But that's it for us for today, guys. Thanks for listening. And uh yeah, I'll actually, it'll be a solo next week. So you're not gonna see them for two weeks. You wanna say something? All I wanna say is guys, I know I'm gonna be gone for a little bit, but I'll be right back here in two weeks. <laughs> you could just said, oh. I just want to reassure them because oh, you know, okay. like some people Get people lost. walk out of people's lives and they don't reassure them that they'll be back. And I don't want to be that type of person. Fair enough. I'll be back, as John Travolta would say. Well. <laughs>